Well hello there and welcome to this video on frame serving with Vegas. This is a follow up to my previous video on advanced techniques for Elgato game capture. And although an Elgato game capture card is not required to follow this video, you may benefit from watching the previous video as some of the techniques apply to other game capture software. So what exactly is a frame server and why do you want it? Well technically it's a plugin for your video editing suite. And what this plugin does is write one frame of your video to a file in an uncompressed format at full quality. And then another program would pick up this single frame and encode it in whichever way you set it up. It would do this for every single frame in the video until all processing has finished. Then it would receive the audio from your editor, encode it and add it to the newly created video file. There are several reasons for using a frame server. One of which is having full manual control over the encoding process. And instead of relying on a closed source plugin in your editor, you can use something open source such as FFmpeg to do the encoding. Another reason for using a frame server is to speed up the overall encoding process, whether it be from a more optimised frame client or because of the settings used on that client. We're going to cover the process of exporting a video for YouTube, which realistically means throwing away a lot of the quality from your original files, although this could be used for the creation of DVD or Blu-ray footage. We won't be covering that today. The required tools are Debug Mode Frame Server, AVI Synth, and the 32-bit edition of FFmpeg. Since this tutorial is aimed at Vegas, grab the Vegas version of Debug Mode Frame Server. At the time of recording, this is version 2.15. After you've downloaded it, begin the installation process, which will install the Frame Server Core and also the Vegas 64-bit plugin. Choose a location for the Frame Server Core files. The default location should be just fine. Then choose a location for the Vegas 64-bit plugin. If you're using Sony Vegas 13, then the default location should be just fine. If you're using the newer Magix Vegas 14 or higher, then you'll need to change the location to the Magix installation directory. Next, grab the 32-bit static build of FFmpeg for Windows. Although the 64-bit edition of FFmpeg is slightly better in regards to encoding speed, I was unable to get it to work with this process. Now, make a new folder on your C drive called FFmpeg. Take the 32-bit edition of FFmpeg.exe and drop that into the new folder that you've just created. Rename this file to ffmpeg32.exe to differentiate between 32 and 64-bit editions of ffmpeg. You may already have the 64-bit edition installed in this folder from the previous tutorial. If that's the case, then temporarily rename it to ffmpeg64.exe and then rename it back to ffmpeg.exe after you've renamed the 32-bit edition. You'll soon see why we're renaming this file. Finally, grab the 32-bit edition of AviSynth and install it to the default location. So now that our server and client are both installed, we need some sort of instruction set to power both of them. Go to the video description and download the frame server file package. Inside this package is a default project template for AviSynth and also a YouTube ready batch file for FFmpeg covering 720HD, 1080 Full HD and 1440 Quad HD. The batch commands follow Google's recommended upload encoding settings. So let's take a brief look at that batch file, shall we? ffmpeg32.exe is started with an option to hide some of the junk that you don't need to see. It then accepts the input file with the Y option to always overwrite files, just in case a previous attempt failed for any reason. The codec for video is set to libx264 with the preset set to medium. You could change this to fast, faster or very fast if you wanted a faster encoding time, but you'd lose quality in doing so. And I advise against that because you need as much quality as possible before YouTube further reduces the quality. Next comes the bitrate range. We use variable bitrate here, as recommended by Google. Although less effective in variable bitrate mode, we want to set a minimum, plus average and maximum bitrate. So for this particular command, the minimum rate is set to 5.625 megabit. The bitrate for video, average bitrate in other words, is set to 7.5 megabit, as recommended by Google for 720p footage at 48, 50 or 60 frames per second. The max rate is set to 9.375 megabit. And no, I didn't pull those numbers out of a bucket. If you take the standard bitrate, divide by 4, then multiply by 3, that's the minimum rate. Then multiply by 5 for the maximum rate. 
These upper and lower limits are important to keep a good average bitrate, although more effective in CBR. The codec for audio is AAC. The bitrate for audio, 384K. Then we have MOV flags, fast start, which will relocate the move atom to the beginning of the file. BF2 sets the consecutive B frames to 2. Flags CGOP sets closed group of pictures. PIX underscore FMT YUV420P sets the chroma subsampling to 4, 2, 0. And finally, the output file, which will be the same as the input file with .mp4 appended to it. The input file, of course, is the AviSynth script, which contains the following commands. AviSource, with the location and file name, as output by the debug mode frame server. Audio output is set to true. No frame rate is specified here, so the source frame rate will be used. The second line is a Lancho scale filter, which can be used to downscale or upscale your footage. So say your footage was recorded at 1080p, but you wanted to upscale to 1440p. All you'd have to do is remove the hash from the beginning of this line, and your footage would then be scaled to 1440. A good reason for doing this to 1080p footage is so that YouTube allocates the file more bitrate. And for people watching at 1440p on a 1080p screen, that means that they get closer to your original export in terms of quality, assuming that they have the bandwidth to stream 1440p footage. Also, the legacy YouTube player is incapable of playing files that go beyond 1440p at 30 frames a second. So if you were to do the export at 1440p, 60 frames a second, that would trigger YouTube to re-encode your footage using the VP9 codec, which is considerably better quality than the default X264 encoder, but can only be displayed on supported devices. Finally, we convert the footage to YV12, which completes the encoding to YUV420P. Okay, so now you understand what's going on and why, let's take a look at the export process in action. As normal, when exporting a video, we go to File and Render As. The export plugins show up as per usual, and you'll also notice that there is a new plugin called Debug Mode Frame Server. Select this and choose Project Default. Press the Render button and you'll be greeted with the Debug Mode Frame Server setup window. There's only one thing to change here, and that's where it says Video Output. Change the format to YUY2, and then press Next. The frame server is now active and we'll be writing frames to the signpost file shown in the status window. We need to make sure that this signpost file is the same file used in the AviSynth script. Drag and drop the AviSynth script onto the FFmpeg batch file. A menu should pop up with three options, 720, 1080 and 1440. Select the resolution that applies to your video. If everything was set up correctly then you should see FFmpeg begin encoding your file. The system time is saved when the batch begins. Then, when the batch ends, the system time is captured once more, and both the start time and end time are shown, so that you know how long the process took. The batch file will end with a pause command, so you'll have to press a key when the batch finishes, or if there was an error for any reason. When the encoding is finished, I recommend that you watch the full video in your favourite media player, to make sure there were no problems encoding. You can minimise problems by not doing anything else on your computer while the encoding is taking place. Hopefully everything went well, and you may notice that the encoding was slightly faster than any comparable plugin in Vegas, although your mileage may vary. So as with the previous video that I did with advanced techniques for Elgato game capture, it's slightly more complicated than clicking a few buttons, but really the complicated part is just getting it all set up. Once you're set up, it's just a few extra steps compared to the built-in plugins. And so for each new project that you make, all you'd have to do is copy the AviSynth script and change the Avi source to whatever your expected file name might be after exporting. And there you go, it's just the same process again. Render as, debug mode frame server, press render, press next, drag and drop the AviSynth script onto the FFmpeg batch, and then wait. Oh sorry, no, 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 that last step should be profit. So hopefully you understood all of that and you learned something new by watching this video. If you did, consider giving the video a thumbs up and also subscribe as there'll be more videos in the future. If you have any feedback about the video or questions, then feel free to drop me a line in the comments section below. Good luck frame serving your future projects. My name is Derek Deagle 
also known as Desert Eagle Derek. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.